Dave, we met some years ago. We actually saw Dave for around and about, as we do, being in that space online for quite a long period of time. I think I actually spoke to him about seven years ago, very briefly, but didn't decide he was the right guy for us. Several years later, I realized that was one of the biggest mistakes I'd made because we now use Dave exclusively with a number of our areas. and He's invested a lot of time and work in helping us with our business and with an exciting area of it, which he's going to share with you, our franchise Simply Systems. And here's the man behind it, but he's, he represents a lot more than just systems. He represents the whole process. He knows the internet, he knows the personalities, he knows the processes, and he knows, I suppose, the formats you need to use. So having said that, Dave, thanks very much for joining us. Yeah, pleasure. Over to you, and I'm going to sit down and thoroughly enjoy your presentation. And that's what I'm going to actually be sharing with you, one of my core marketing systems which is called Authority Content. And you can see it's the simple system for franchisors to build their brand, sales, and credibility. Um, I'm, I'm gonna tailor this message very specifically to franchises and, and franchisors as well. Um, so probably to start, I just wanna get a little bit of an idea of some of the uh, frustrations that uh, as a franchisor that you think you're gonna come up against as you start to grow your franchise and franchisees. Like, I'm sure through this process in this weekend, you've identified things, well, you know, I've got to go out and find franchisees. I've, I've got to prove my franchise prototype actually works and I can find people who want to buy whatever the products and services are. Um, yeah, love to hear some of the other things that you'll see as some challenges. We have a gluten-free bakery in Geelong and um, I think one of our things is going to keep them on the track of following the procedures, our product is very finite and focused sort of thing. And getting that, getting a system in place that will remind them all the time that deviating from the process will, will end up in disaster. So that to us is gonna be the greatest area of difficulty, getting them to do it and what have you. Repetitively so they don't cut corners and what have you is where we've sort of got to find to a keep way that, to that brand real integrity real quite high because you want everybody when they go into one bakery to have the same experience yeah. as when they go into any other bakery. So yeah, I, I definitely see that as a challenge. Any other challenges people can think of? Things like onboarding franchisees, like how do you get them to train them through that process? Same with staff. As your franchises grow, you're going to bring, be bringing on lots of different staff. So you're going to have to train them up. So I know uh, Brian and, and Prue and the team probably over the weekend have given you different ways to overcome some of these challenges. Uh, and that's really what I also want to try and do in this presentation is show you a method or a system to, to um, solve some of these potential frustrations that you'll have. So I'll, I'll, I'll take you through this process. I did want to just um, talk a little bit about this guy. Here. Does anyone know who this is? Michael Gerber. Michael Gerber, that's right. He wrote the book called The E-Myth. There's a couple of his e-myth books just over there. Um, I had a, a couple of really interesting insights from working with Michael. Late last year, we were approached to launch the last book in his e-myth series called Beyond the E-Myth. He wanted a, a process to launch it and become an Amazon bestseller almost overnight. And we developed that process. Um, and so we worked with him late last year and, and went through that process. And what I found really, really interesting, he is known as the systems guy. He's the process guy, yet he doesn't actually write or document any of the systems himself. What he does is he goes and finds the expert or the consultant in the space who knows how to do the thing, gets them to effectively write out the process or the procedure, and then he almost like ingests that in his business and that becomes part of the way that they do things. Because they, uh, Michael's written a whole lot of vertical books, things like E-Myth for Accountants, E-Myth for Lawyers, E-Myth for Plumbers, E-Myth for Real Estate Agents. If you've seen some of Michael's work, you'll probably see he's gone after all of these verticals and he wanted a system when they get a new author on board to make sure that the book sold really, really well. So that's, that was a real key insight because when you start to think about systems and processes, um, sometimes the business owner feels like they need to be the one that has to create the systems and the process. But usually they're actually the worst person within the business to be creating the systems and the processes because they're caught up with driving the business forward and winning new business and innovating and even just dealing with customers and getting those first few great results and dealing with the franchisees. There's so much to be done to then try and layer on this idea of creating systems. Um, it, it, it can be quite overwhelming. So 
as long as I had that breakthrough that I don't need to be the one to create the process. You find who is already good at the process and then you, you bring that into your business. So what I actually want to take you through is um, my marketing process effectively. So if you think about breaking your business up into the different departments, as, as Brian talked about earlier over the, the week, um, we're really going to focus in this particular area to do with the, the marketing side of things. And one of the, the big frustrations that I know you'll have is how do we get visibility? Uh, how do you get your brand out there, both for potential people to buy your products and services, but also for franchise, getting, attracting franchisees into your business as well. Um, and that's one of the reasons I want to, I'll talk a little bit about Google because your target market are on there searching for your products and services and also for franchise opportunities. So you want to make sure that you're there. And it's, it's a little bit different from things like Facebook or LinkedIn. Some of advertising on some of those platforms, it's very interruption based marketing. Here I am on Facebook looking at you know, what my friends are up to or thinking about what I'm going to do about this weekend. And then an ad pops up and you're trying to get my attention to take me off to have a look at some other opportunity over here. It's very different than going to Google. I'm looking for franchise opportunities or I'm looking for insert your product or service name here. Now I'm actively seeking out something and I go to Google looking for an answer. So that's why it's really key to make sure that you, you um, understand the way Google works. And I'll take you through this process of authority content. And uh, as we ask some questions, we'll make sure we give out a few books as prizes, which kind of documents this process in more detail as well. So we'll talk about what it is. We'll have a, a look at, I've broken it into three steps, present, product, and promote. And I also want to give you some examples and applications of some of the different clients that we've worked with. And um, so you can model that success. So just to start with, we'll kind of talk just briefly about Google. Um, has anyone dabbled in or know anything about search engine optimization or SEO? Yep. So you probably would have seen, depending on how long you've done it for, there's been so many different changes over the years and, and Google's evolving and their whole intention really is to serve the best and most relevant results to someone when they're searching online. They want you to get to the answer to your question in the least number of clicks. Because they know if they do that, you'll keep coming back You'll keep using Google and then they'll keep getting revenue because they can advertise around um, you know, the, the different organic or the search results and that's how they make their money. So that whole objective for them is to make sure that they keep you engaged and make sure that they give you what you're looking for. Um, the best thing that you can do is trying to align your objectives with Google's objectives. So rather than thinking, how do I gain the search engine? You think, well, how do I give Google what it is that they want? And also, how do we give our clients what they want? And when you get that overlap, that's when you start to perform really well online. So Google, they, they, while we don't want to under, like, uh, don't need to necessarily reverse engineer the algorithm, you don't need to know exactly what causes something to rank. I just want you to understand the main building blocks because that'll kind of flow into the next couple of steps. Google released a thing they call the uh, quality guidelines and this is a document, you can Google it online, like Google search quality guidelines, you can download it, it's a PDF, um, it's a document that they give their manual reviewers. When someone looks at a website, how do you determine if it's a good or a bad website? Where in the search engine results should you place that website? And this document explains f how they actually rate that process. So you can pick up ideas out of that. I've cherry picked some of the, the ideas that we can drill down in on, but effectively what they do is they have a whole series of questions and then they get to ask, um, they get the reviewer to rate you on a scale of lowest to highest. And then they just sum all of this together and that gives almost like a quality score for your website. And then that will help determine how well it ranks. Now, Normally, most of my slides, as we get a little bit deeper, they're nice big pictures and I don't like these heavy text uh, slides, but I wanted to just show you this is straight from the horse's mouth. So these are screenshots from the document. Uh, but a few points are uh, things like, it should come from those with experience and everyday expertise. If a page is deliberately created with no MC, which is main content, give it the lowest rating. Uh, and here, this is probably a really key one for me. 
high quality pages and websites need enough expertise to be authoritative and trustworthy. And you don't penalize a person or a website for not having formal education or training in a field. So you, you want to have useful, helpful information. You don't have to necessarily be the expert, but Google will reward you for being helpful and giving um, educational answers through to your clients. And they've got one here. Um, a very positive reputation can be the reason for giving a high for an otherwise medium page. So what this is saying is if you've got a positive reputation in the eyes of Google, and I'll, I'll give you some steps on how you can achieve this, all things, you know, even if your page doesn't tick all of the boxes, if you've got a good reputation, your whole website tends to perform well online. So the aim of the game really becomes how do we position you as the authority, the expert, the Oprah in your space? You want to think about your industry. You want to think about building up your franchise. H how do you appear to be the authority, the, the Oprah, that, that central piece? And that's, that's what I want to take you through a, a process of. Because once, once you do that, you get rewarded by Google. It also helps your target market because you know prospects and uh, franchisees, if they go to you and they see you as the authority and the expert, the sales process is infinitely easier as well. So that's just a little bit of an understanding. And I didn't want to get technical uh, with search engine optimization, but rather the big takeaway, the breakaway, um, is if you focus on building up your expertise and your authority, you'll do well with Google. And regardless of what happens years down the track, who knows, Google might die tomorrow. Like um, we, we saw that with MySpace, there are big properties that build up uh, in a space and then almost di disappear overnight. Um, but if you focus on building your authority, regardless of what ends up happening, you still tend to perform really, really well. So focusing on that authority. So we'll talk a little bit about what authority content is. Uh, and this is a, just a definition from the, the book here, uh, but it's the act of consistently creating and distributing helpful information and stories to gain the attention, engagement and influence of a clearly defined audience with the objective being to identify those who would benefit from your products and services. Now, if I was to write that again, I'd probably do it in two sentences. That's a really big mouthful, but, but I'll try and unpack it for you here. Um, authority content is about consistently creating and distributing helpful information and stories to get the attention. So everybody's busy online. We want to be pr putting out great content. As franchisors, you need to put out great content to catch the attention of your target audience. You need to do it on a consistent basis so they start to engage them. And if you do that over a long enough period of time, they'll start to trust you. So. As the franchisor, what, what is one of your primary objectives? You also want to be generating business for your franchisees. So you really have two target audiences there. You need to be attracting in the people who are going to buy your products and services, but you also need to be attracting in your franchisees. And that's, I know Brian talked about, he likes the idea of having separate websites for that, because you really do have two target audiences. But to engage an audience, you need some form of content and something that's interesting enough that really engages them. And then when someone starts to engage in your co content, just by them engaging in, in it, it's like they self-select. They've kind of um, put their hand up as someone who is interested in your products and services. So I'll give you an example of, of this idea of what authority content is. So um, we worked with a company called Compass Pools. They're a swimming pool manufacturer. Uh, and um, they wanted to create some content to engage their audience. And we started work with them and we, we worked with this guy here, David Payne. He was their lead sales person. And he was telling me this story after he implemented authority content. He went to go visit a prospective uh, buyer of a swimming pool. He got to the front door and he met the husband and wife and the, the wife said, oh, it's great to see you again. And he thought, oh, that's a little bit odd. We've not met before, but I won't say anything. Kind of went into the house and sat down and 20 minutes goes by and there's two or three references of, oh, you've said this in the past or it felt like I, I knew you um, and he knew that they'd never actually met. So we thought, 
I need to say something because if it goes too much further and they find out we've never actually met, this is going to be really awkward. So he, he politely asked, have we met before? And both the husband and the wife, they were adamant. They were like, yep, yeah, well, I'm sure we've met before. But they couldn't exactly remember when. So it went on for about another 40 minutes. And then the husband goes, I know where I know you from. You're the guy from all of the, web, the videos on the Compass Pools website. They'd watched two hours worth of content of him answering frequently asked questions before he ever stepped foot in the house. So the whole dynamic had changed before he ever stepped in the door. They felt like they knew him even though they'd never actually met him. And then that changed that whole sales dynamic. Now, if you think uh, yourself as a franchisor, um, one of the uh, risks that you've got is as you start to sell to franchisees, um, you want to make sure that they're representing you and your brand well. And they're, the, they, you've probably got a lead salesperson or maybe you are the salesperson and you know how to answer all of those frequently asked questions in the best possible way. So using this process, I'll take you through authority content, you can capture that and then empower your enfranchi franchisees to use that content, which then puts your best foot forward and then helps to maintain that core message of the franchisor without necessarily having it diluted. Um, so the way that we ended up doing it is um, we, we ended up going and working with them. I, we shot a full day worth of videos of him answering frequently asked questions uh, about swimming pools and that ended up getting loaded on the website and we repurposed it. I'll actually take you through that process so you'll see what's involved. But it's a great way to capture and bottle you know, the, the essence of your franchise and then enable your franchisees to be able to use that same content for their businesses as well. So it's a three-step process. We've got present, product and promote. That's what we're going to go through. Um, it's, it's something that I've been refining over the years in all of the different businesses that I've used. This is how I launch each of the businesses. I start off capturing a whole lot of video content. We chop it up into little pieces and then we repurpose that content. And we've worked with lots of different companies going through this process and getting some really great results. We've just started working with a company called The Touch Up Guy. They're a franchise. Uh, we're working with a franchisor and they're going through this process and looking to create content that then their franchisees can use. So we'll go through the first one. It's all about firstly creating helpful content. So that's a, uh, we worked with a Victorian Cosmetic Institute of Australia uh, and uh, what they ended up doing is they got one of their doctors to go into the practice and we sat down with them and had them answer a whole lot of frequently asked questions. We captured that about questions people ask prior to them having a cosmetic procedure and then we chopped that content up and then repurposed it. So if you, if you think about your situation, if you were going to create some content, what content would you create? And you've got two target audiences, so you might have to create two lots of content. Uh, for example, you've got the franchisors, uh, sorry, franchisees. So you have to think in terms of what type of questions would a potential franchisee be asking just prior to them making a decision that they would be looking for a franchise. So oftentimes people are looking for business opportunities, they'd go to Google, they might be, you know, they've got questions in their head that they would be thinking prior to them purchasing a franchise. You, what you want to do is start to answer those questions and then get it on your website so when someone is searching, you start to come up. So I'm just wondering, if someone's buying a franchise, what type of questions would they be asking, do you think? What makes your product unique and different? Yeah, how, how do I select a great franchise? That, that, that might be something like if I was online and I'm searching, or how do I buy a franchise, or how do I search a good franchise? That, if you start to create content that answers those type of questions, you're getting someone right at the point at which they're online, on Google, researching about buying a franchise. So you need to get into the mind of that prospect and then think about all of those. And then similarly, as you were saying, there's probably another series of questions. Once they've almost made a purchasing decision and maybe they're settling on the final few franchises to select from, then it would be things like, yeah, what, 
um, what locations um, would be relevant? Uh, like, you know, what, what geo locations does this franchise serve? What, what are some other questions that someone might ask if they were about to buy? I think if I'm uh, going to buy a shop, our first question I'm going to ask is uh, how much profit I will get from the, you know, from the yes. franchise or... Perfect. And I've got the example that I'll show you um, is a very similar question that people ask when they purchase a swimming pool, which is how much is a swimming pool going to cost? In just about the, the age old price question. So you could get a chance to answer that question in a diplomatic way, which is obviously, well, it depends. There are a lot of different factors that affect how much profit. You know, we can give you the averages from, you know, these particular franchisees. Um, but that's a great question. Like, so, so step one in this process is thinking about all of the questions that someone would be asking just prior to making the purchasing decision. Maybe when they're about to choose the particular franchise, answer all of those questions. And similarly, it's worth because you've got two target audiences, you probably also want to do it for the people who are um, actually considering purchasing your products and services. So I'll end on your bakery. Well, what are some questions that someone might be asking um, if they were wanting to find out about gluten-free um, bakeries or gluten-free products? Like they're probably asking for gluten-free products in certain areas. What, what type of questions would some of your people who actually go into the bakery be asking? Um, I suppose one of where, where is our product available um, and whether or not, I suppose, the process of how we actually make it, is it celiac safe? The, the process is a big one, a video that explains that process. So I think the first thing you've got to do is just a huge brain dump of all of these ideas, right? Just get it out of your, out of your head. And then um, we need to find the right balance. I'm not talking about creating Hollywood production videos where um, you know, something that will appear on TV and it costs many thousands of dollars for each video. What I'm talking about is finding the right balance between quality versus quantity. And I'll show you a good example of this. Um, I do believe it's best to start with video though, because if you answer these questions in video, we can actually repurpose that content quite heavily. You can then get it transcribed, those transcriptions can turn into articles, you know, those articles could also form part of your franchise manuals or your franchisee manuals. Um, so you, you just think about this up front. I, I love video and it's also, we're seeing a huge growth in the consumption of video. Like TVs have gone, um, you know, internet ready now and people are streaming YouTube straight to their TV. Um, people are, you know, with the NBN, people are, are consuming a lot more video content. So oftentimes as well, if you think about how you can stand out from the other franchises, how many franchises out there do you think are there with, um, the top 30 questions that someone asks prior to making the purchase of a franchise and they answered each one of those questions in two or three minute little video chunks. Not very many. What a great way to stand out from the crowd. What a great way to build the rapport before your salesperson or you even chat with your potential franchisee. Because now, just like the David Payne from Compass Pools example, well, you feel like you already know me now. You've already watched, you know, a couple of hours worth of video content for me. So it's, it's, a, it's a great way to do it. And um, you can do it at your place of business. Um, I, I showed you the video of the Victorian Cosmetic Institute. Um, you could do it uh, in a studio. Um, the, the whole aim is though you batch that content creation. So in one day, you do 20 or 30 short videos. Um, I'll show you an example. It's this one here and this is where we'll see if the audio is working. Yeah. So that's a really good example of the type of content that I'm talking about. Uh, that was not scripted uh, because he's a salesperson and that's what he does day in and day out and he knows the subject matter very deeply. Um, all he had was uh, the question and then the main bullet points and the touch points that he wanted to cover. And then he kind of just ad-libbed from there. Uh, so if you just imagine the power of doing that and, and thinking in terms of your franchise and the way that you would be able to connect with your target audience and do it at scale. Because ultimately what you're building here is hopefully a business that works without you and something that um, you can grow and scale. So anything that you can work on that gives you time back is a good use of your time. 
That's why I'm such a big fan of video because you can capture yourself doing something and then you can share it and you can have 3,000 people watch that video and answer that question or you might have someone call up and ask a specific question of you and you say, oh, I actually answered that video in a, uh, or that question in a video. Can I grab your name and email and I'll shoot you over the video. I'll give you the short answer now, but you know, then you can go watch this video. Again, think of in terms of your franchisees as well. If they don't know how to answer a particular question, they can then say, oh, you know, James from our head office answered that um, really, really well. I'll just grab your name and your email and I'll send you the link to watch it. So it's a really great way to make sure that you keep that message right and you deliver it um, to a very high standard. Um, this is the Compass Pools example. You know, we just went through a whole bunch of questions, things like, should I be, how do I choose between concrete and fiberglass? Uh, how much does the pool cost we looked at? What sort of pool colours are there? Um, what different sh sizes and shapes? And, and when we assembled this, you'll actually see it turned into a little bit of a buyer's guide that lived on the website. Now again, there's two audiences you need to be aware of. You've got the potential people that will be buying your products and services, but then you've also got your franchisees as well. So you're probably going to create two different lots of content for each one. Um, that leads us to the second step. So once you've you know, presented that content, we then turn it into some sort of you know, product. That's the second P in the authority content process. This is the way that we did it for Compass Pools. We created a swimming pool buyer's guide and we imagined someone was thinking about purchasing a pool and we imagined their journey. What questions would they be asking from the point of, hey, I'm thinking about a swimming pool to now it's going to happen to now I've got to maintain it. So we kind of from start to finish and then we started to group the questions together and each one of these, oh, each one of these little um, underlines just there, they're, they're a frequently asked question that when someone clicked on it, they would go through to an individual landing page with a short two to three minute video that answered that specific question. It had the transcript underneath of it, uh, underneath it as well. Now, the reason this works so well, not only is, does Google love this, because you're kind of giving Google what they want, you're answering people's specific questions. It's really good for the user because it they kind of get to answer their own questions without picking up the phone. Sometimes there's always a little bit of hesitation. Imagine if you were buying a franchise and you were thinking of you know, buying a quarter of a million dollar franchise. You're, you're probably going to have a lot of questions before you reach that decision. It's a pretty long buying cycle. Same with a swimming pool. You, it's a 60 grand investment. You're going to do a little bit of research before you jump straight in. Now, if I was early days in my research to buy a franchise, I would be wary about putting my details straight into a form saying, yes, I'm interested in a Gloria Jean franchise because I think I'm going to get hounded for the next three to six months. But if I can self-serve and help myself, I'll do this at home and I'll feel comfortable to the point at which, ah, now I want to you know, get my free swimming pool buyer's guide or you know, whatever it is for your business, whatever that next step is. So it's a nice way to kind of encourage them to take that next step. Um, you can also repurpose that content as well. Again, you've got two audiences. You've got uh, your franchisees and you've also got the people looking at your products and services. For the franchisees, you could also create training material for them in a very similar process, um, answering frequently asked questions or creating um, an onboarding experience for when they join your franchise. So that way they can kind of get inducted into the way that you do what it is that you do. So the, the content I just showed you, yes, you could have it live on the website, or if you wanted to have it behind closed doors in something like Franchise Simply Systems, which we'll talk a little bit about late, uh, later, you can house this content you know, behind the scenes. Uh, the way I think of this type of content for me is it's a little bit like um, a digital asset because we create this video once but you can now use it for the next five years, ten years. Like a lot of the content that you're going to be answering in these videos are evergreen questions that people are going to continue to ask. So you just get massive leverage and scale and when you think of it in terms of search engine optimization as well, uh, we can then start to drive traffic for each of these little phrases when we know someone's searching for quite a long obscure search term or query, but it's very highly matched. You know, if they, if they have a very specific question about a franchise, we, we can have content 
there to answer their questions. Just like to get a little bit of an idea if anyone has any ideas on potentially the type of content that they would create for franchisees. Like I'd like, I don't know if you've got any suggestions on some other ways that you might be able to use content to engage franchisees. Yep. Um, directly to the school, so you know we normally sell that through the PNC school shop, whatever. So probably for us, it'd be good to have videos which say, you know, oh, I'm from the PNC. Why would I have that in my school? What's the benefits for the principal? And all, you know, so I can see a whole raft of ideas there. Of you know, so because they're the question, they're the hard questions. Once you answer all them, the selling part is very easy, yeah. but you just need to get over the hump of should I have that in my school because you know, is it good for my school or not? Yeah, yep, and that's the way to think about it. Yeah. You're exactly right. You put yourself in their shoes um, and think, what are all of the obstacles and objections and start to answer those. We're looking at the video stuff at the moment and being a baker, I'm not the greatest video producer there was, but yeah, we're looking at doing videos on some of the procedures we use because yep. we're finding customers are interested. When it goes on the web phone, it rates really well because they're just fascinated how things are pulled together and made and we did one on hot cross buns that we ran earlier this year and that sort of thing. And we find that people just want to see how things are done. Yeah. So we're doing a lot of that and I assume the franchisee will be in the same spirit. Yep, yep. That's really good and there's probably um, both of those examples uh, uh, kind of touched on, yes, with the potential person who's going to buy your products and services and then also for your franchisees as well. Another real great way to do this because you need to create your franchisee manuals at some point in time. Structure a day when you batch all of that content creation for your franchisee and then those videos can get transcribed and then that can become the first version of your franchise or manual. Because it feels like when, when you see franchise manuals, it feels like it's, it's a big uh, hurdle to overcome to get it, them documented and get everything down. It's much easier if you've got, and you're working with transcripts and you're editing, than it would be staring at a blank page. So that, that can be another really great way. The way that you could do it, get your couple of first pers perspective franchisees, the ones that are thinking about doing it and say, hey, I'm going to put on this free training day where I'm going to teach you everything about the bakery. It doesn't cost anything to come. You just come along and I'll teach you everything. And then they come along and you record the whole day. And that, that might become your first training day that then you would give to your franchisees when they came on board. And that's the sort of stuff that makes you stand out from your competition as well. Because when a franchisee buys your franchise, they want to make sure that they're going to be a success. That's the biggest thing in their head, is if I'm going to spend you know, a couple of hundred thousand dollars buying a franchise, I want to make sure that this is going to work for me. And if you can say, hey, we've got all of the training, the processes, procedures, that goes a long way in them building that confidence. That leads us to the, the final step, uh, which is the promote step. So now that you've got all of this content, we think about, well, how are we going to use it? Because you're sitting on a mountain of content now. If you put aside a day, you listed out all of your frequently asked questions, and then you sat down and you recorded it all in one go, now you've got this mountain of content that can be repurposed in a lot of different ways. Obviously, the reason I like we start with video is because um, we can repurpose it in so many different ways, but now we've got the audio as well. Sometimes you might be teaching something and you don't need the visuals. So you could have the additional uh, consumption mechanism of an MP3. So when a franchisee joins you, you say, hey, we've got all of this in audio, load it to your iPod. In fact, we've already loaded it to an iPod for you. So here's an iPod fully loaded with all of our training. You just listen to that over the next week and that'll get you started. A really great value add. Obviously you've got all the text as well because you can transcribe it together and then you can get that polished. Um, from a marketing perspective, uh, now you've got a lot of content that can be repurposed. You know, those videos can get uploaded to YouTube, you can upload it to your website. Um, as you start to build up your database, you can start to email them to let them know that you've got this new content that, that shows your baking process or that, you know, answers the top five questions that um, most people ask when figuring out about gluten-free or you know celiac questions. You can then start to share that on, gives you something to actually share on social media. Sometimes, again, this is probably more relevant for 
attracting people to your products and services than it would be necessarily for your franchisors. I'm not too sure if you'd be sharing that type of content for your franchisors, but definitely for your um, people who are purchasing your products and services. Um, and then we do like to SEO everything. So uh, you, you started with the question and that's actually how you created the content. So already you've kind of built in SEO, search engine op optimization. So it's the idea of, of uh, choosing the keywords that people are searching and then putting it into the content. But if you've answered a frequently asked question, you'll find oftentimes the, the keyword phrases have naturally popped in there. You don't need to force it. Um, you can even go to Google and you type in, you know when you type something into Google and it does the predictive text and it gives you these suggestions, it kind of auto-complete. Have you done that when you go to Google and then it, it finishes it off and gives you a few suggestions or you might run a search and you scroll down to the bottom of Google and you see down the bottom related searches. Has anyone noticed that? That's a great place to look for keywords and topics to create content on because this is Google telling you what people are searching for. So if you're about to create a video, you could, you know, or you figure out what your 50 content topics are, go to Google, start typing just the start of the idea in of whatever that question answers, and then get Google to tell you how people are searching for that, if that makes sense. And then you just take that content and yeah, and you start to put it everywhere. So a good example of this is, um, the, on the left hand side, you know, we optimized for pool construction process. So you can see we put it up in the URL up the top, it's on the page, title, it's down underneath the video. Um, swimming pool cost is another keyword that we were going after there. That's a YouTube video in the right hand corner. So we start to, just naturally, those keywords start to make it in. You don't even have to force it in. Um, and, and the key for this is just being consistent. Once you batch that content, you're sitting on a mountain of content now. You can just drip that out over a consistent period of time and SEO starts to happen naturally. Um, if you think about it this way as well, like let's say you, in one day you got 30 videos, then you turn those into 30 blog posts, you've split out the audio, now you've got 30 SoundCloud or iTunes bits of content. You might then take the uh, transcriptions and, and get them turned into nice articles. Now you've got another 30 articles. You don't share everything on social media. Let's say you share some of the content on social media. Um, you might email out your database. Um, you know, you can do some press releases and other things. Like this, the, the takeaway I'm trying to show you here is from, if you think about this right up front, and you batch this and you do it all in one go, you could create enough content for the next six months. Most business owners struggle to put out one blog post a month. You know, they're working with an SEO company and the SEO company is saying, write me an article every week or something like that. And you're like, I've got to deal with my customers. I've got to deal with my franchisees. When am I going to time to sit, sit down and write an article? But this is a great way. It's like a Band-Aid. You rip it all off in one go. You, you pick a date. You have to present, you get it all out, and then over time you chop it up and then repurpose it. And uh, again, and with the franchises, you, you get two, two target audiences here as well. So you might have a look at half a day, you might present questions to the, you know, the people who are going to purchase your products and services, and the other day might be to your franchisees. Um, and then what you do is you, you watch what is working, and then you magnify what is working. So, or you amplify it. So, let's say you start loading all of this content out. When I think of um, what we did for Compass Pools, I think the How Much Does a Swimming Pool Cost was probably one of their most viewed videos. So then we started doing things like running it as pre-roll YouTube ads. We started writing press releases for it. We started using remarketing. So when someone visited a website and then you were back on Facebook, and you were looking at things, then the ad would show up with how much does a swimming pool cost, but we're only sending that to people who visited your website. So it's a, it's a really great way, and we're, we're doing it with what we know is the most engaging piece of content, which is the how much does a swimming pool cost. So you, you put all of this out there, and then you watch what floats to the top. You know, and then, yeah, that's an example of doing a press release and things like that. Uh, the real takeaway here is that what you're doing is you're being helpful even though this helps with search engine optimization, 
really it's helping your target audience. You're answering questions, you're giving Google what they want, you're giving your clients what they want, um, and by doing that, you actually end up appearing better in the search engines. You get seen as the authority, um, and you get seen as the Oprah because you're helpful and you're answering questions, and how many other franchisees or franchisors are out there doing this? There's only, there's not that many, so it's a great way to stand out from the crowd. Um, so if we take a little bit of a closer look, and, and I mean, this is just from our, our business. This is just my YouTube channel. Um, you can see I, I took this a uh, couple months ago, but I had over 100,000 minutes watched, which works out to be 1,600 hours in uh, 90 days. So in three months, I had 1,600 hours worth of my content watched. Now, is every one of those going to be a buyer? No, but when what it does, it's a great way to identify people who would be perfect fit for me. And by the time they try and chat with me about working with us, they already feel like I'm the expert, the authority, they know, like, and trust me, like David Payne, because they've already watched a whole bunch of content. So that's, yeah, there's real power in that. And I wanted to, uh, in the tail end, tell you a little bit of a story about uh, this guy here, what a 19-year-old Romanian taught me about viral video marketing. Um, it was, yeah, an, an interesting story. I had a, a friend based in Melbourne who posted something on Twitter and said, I've got this really super cool project and um, I'm, I'm getting a group of 30 people together and everybody's going to throw in $500. I can't tell you what it is, but if you PayPal me $500, I'll tell you more about it. <laughs> we want to build a life-size Lego car powered by air. So everybody who put the money in will help us buy the bricks. Now, there's this 19-year-old Romanian kid on the other side of the world, um, uh, Raul, who we sent the bricks to. And then over the course of 12 months, he started to build this Lego car powered by air. So everything um, except for the wheels and the load-bearing struts and the compressed air, which is at the back of it, everything else is made by Lego. And he built it over 12 months, and then uh, we shipped him uh, and the uh, car in a crate to Australia. Well, he wasn't in, he got on a plane, and we put the car in a crate, and then that was shipped over. Uh, and then we ended up uh, unleashing it on the streets of Melbourne. Obviously, Vic Rhodes wasn't going to give us a permit, so we did it at like 4 a.m. one morning out in the burbs. Um, and this is the video that we recorded. I show you that video, that video uh, went viral. We launched it a couple of years ago, just before Christmas. Uh, got over 4 million views in 30 days, picked up by 150 different media outlets, <laughs> worldwide coverage um, on all the big uh, networks, particularly over in the States. And it was amazing to be at the center of that. What was really interesting was the 
the amount of time and effort that went into bringing that project together and the cost, like we all put in 500 bucks, that didn't even come close to covering the project. So the guy who was actually running it put in significantly more. And the way they tried to monetize this, they put some pre-roll YouTube ads on it and things like that, and they didn't make more than a few grand from it. Um, that was when a viral video, you know, now it's, it's close to 10 million views at the moment, um, and it didn't make any money. And the, the takeaway that I learned there is, I make 10 times, 1,000 times more money by creating consistent authority content that answers a very specific person's problem with a product or service that I'm selling on the back end. So if you're, cre if you're selling franchises, then creating all of those little videos that I'm talking about now, it doesn't need to go viral. You don't need to get 8 million views on a video for this to pay itself back tenfold. Some videos only have a handful of views, but it just takes that one franchisee who watches that video and then makes that connection and then buys it and then it ends up paying for itself. And that's why we try and throw a lot against the wall. And some actually stick better than others. So at the moment, you'll see up here, these are some shots from in my YouTube account. These are the better performing ones. But I've got like over 500 videos, probably close to 600 videos on the YouTube account. A couple of them are home runs. The vast majority of them are not. So you then know also how to double down on the bits that are working really, really well. So the takeaway here is you don't need to get caught up in making sure that these are you know, beautiful television grade videos. Like you saw that video of David Payne, quite simple, dude talking at the camera, one angle, one take, not more than a minute, minute and a half long, answering a very specific question for a very specific person who's looking at making a $60,000 purchase. I'll leave you with one final nugget in the last little bit here um, is another way that you can just squeeze a little bit more out of this particular uh, effort. You've gone to all the effort of recording this great content. Now, how can we get a little bit more from it? You're, I mentioned you can get everything transcribed and now that transcription uh, can form the basis potentially of a book. Uh, with Compass Pools, we ended up turning it into a magazine. So um, you saw on the website, I only briefly mentioned it, but there was, you know, register for your free um, or, or get your free swimming pool buying guide or something like that. It's a physical guide. They took all of that content that we created, had it transcribed, given it to a copywriter, put beautiful pictures around it, all the questions that people ask for about buying a swimming pool. This would look great on someone's um, coffee table, like it's a coffee table book. That's the whole purpose of it. Uh, and it's got nice, beautiful, glossy pictures. What, what a great way to engage their potential target market. Um, there, there's you know, a few other people I know, a guy who sells boats who's done it, a guy who sells websites. Having a book is a great way to build authority. So, you, I mean, we see it with Brian and his book. What, what a fantastic way to get to know Brian about his products and services and why you would want to work with Brian to help you franchise your business. He's clearly the expert and the authority. He's written the book on how to franchise. And, and what a great way to encourage someone to give you their details. So you might write the book on something. There's a bakery, you know the Beechworth Bakery, Beechworth bakery guy, Tom, Tom O'Toole? He's written a book as well where he talks about you know, the life and times of, of starting up the Beechworth Bakery. And there's, I'm thinking about Virgin, you know, Branson, the Virgin way, he's got his book. You, you'll see a lot of these uh, big franchise and big brands, the founder end up writing a book as a way to capture their way. You know, that, that's kind of the, the, methodo the, the methodology, the mystique, the, the culture, and it all gets wrapped up into this book. So it might not be the right time for you just yet, but park it in your brain as something maybe a little bit further down the track once you've got some franchisees on board. What a great way and a great outreach tool You've got a pr prospective uh, franchisee and you leave them with your book. That's how I authored the book here, Authority Content. Um, I ran a one day workshop uh, about authority content, that process, I kind of gave you the hour version there. I got my mum to transcribe it. <laughs> uh, she, write, she does all of my transcription. I sent it to a ghostwriter over in the UK, paid him three grand to write version one of this book. And then I edited it, 
And then after I edited it, I went through a process for the book launch, which is what I did for Michael Gerber. Um, and we got it to Amazon bestseller. We sold over 15,000 copies in the space of 30 days. Wow. And then that is a fantastic pre-sales tool. If I'm chatting with someone, I'll send you a copy of my book. Great way to do it. I think with this process, if you're looking for excuses, you'll find them. <laughs> like the reason to do something or not to do something, it's the same. If you look for something, you'll, you'll find it. You, it, it. It takes too long. It costs too much. I don't have the skills. Uh, I showed you how to batch it. So you do it all in one day, gets you half the way there. Cost. Technology these days, to get Pancho to come and record you for the day, it's not that expensive. It just comes, you just, you, yeah, you, you lock it down for, for one day. What a fantastic way to do it. Or technology now for cameras have dropped significantly. It's not that expensive to get high-end digital cameras. Um, skills, go find someone at a university or hire a pa Pancho. Just, if you look for an excuse not to do something, you'll find it. Um, I will, I'll show you this video because it's quite possibly the ugliest video you've ever seen. This is the first video that I ever made on my YouTube channel. I used to be involved in a stock market education business. And I w that's me, I know. <laughs> I know. And that is my bedroom. And I'm only going to show you a little bit of this video because it's quite embarrassing. So I'll only go for a very short time. But I just want to show you, it, it doesn't need to be beautiful. Welcome to metaformula.com. My name is David Jennings and I'm the webmaster here. Uh, and I suppose you're wondering why I that's enough of that video. <laughs> the, um, the reason I show you that though, that video has over 30,000 views. I uploaded that probably close to about eight years ago now. Uh, and uh, it was in, like I said, another industry when I was in the stock market education space. But it's every video that I've made, the first video you make will be the worst video you make. Every video after that gets progressively better. It's a great investment of your time because it enables you to duplicate yourself. I'm obsessed with video because it's the best way that I know to capture and can and clone something and then be able to share it. it th there is no better way. And you guys, as franchisors, that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to capture, can and clone your way and then replicate that with someone else. So uh, yeah, I, I would fall in love with video. Um, if you were looking for reasons not to do something, you'll look for it. But also if you look for reasons to do something, you'll find that too. So we went through and we started off, we talked a little bit about Google, just so you had an understanding and why I think it's important to build yourselves up as the authority and uh, the expert in a space. We talked a little bit about authority content and Happy to say, Brian has actually pre-purchased a copy of Authority Content for everybody. So I've got a book that we'll hand out afterwards. But you can find out a little bit more about that process. We took you through the three stages, present, product, and promote. We talked about the two different audiences. And uh, with the presenting, whether you do it or you get someone in your organization to do it, doesn't really matter either. It doesn't need to be you. If you don't feel great in front of the camera, there's probably someone else on the team that would, or someone who maybe is dealing with customers every day. Find the, the bubbly person on the register who loves to talk to everybody and, and see if they'll jump in some videos or something like that. F hire an actor if you need to. I actually like the idea though of um, the business owner where possible, throw your hat over the fence and do it. it it's a really great way um, to connect. Uh, and get over this thing as well in your head that it has to be uh, produced to a certain level, particularly if it's to your franchisees. Because your franchisees, no other franchisor is doing this. So you can do it average and you're still doing it infinitely better than any, everybody else. Hmm. So you just got best to get started. Then we talked about promoting it. That's um, how you can chop it up and repurpose it. Uh, and then as far as some examples, I didn't go through too many. We talked a little bit about the touch up guys. We did another one actually in um, Queensland, we did a company called Absolute Domestics. I don't know if you've heard of them. They're a domestic cleaning company. Um, not quite a uh, franchise, but they operate in a very similar way. They've got you know, like 10,000 independent cleaners or something like that um, around Australia. Um, and, and a similar process, we kind of went through them. With them, you have to be very clear about the type of content you're creating because uh, they had already created some video content and they created content like, how do I clean the grout uh, in between uh, you know, my, my shower tiles and how do I iron the perfect shirt? And I said to them, 
The person who is searching on YouTube, how do I iron the perfect shirt, is probably not the person looking for a cleaner. It's the person who wants to do it themselves. So when we came in there and we started doing authority content, we got very clear on who that target audience was. And then we started recording questions like, should I feel guilty about getting a cleaner? Great. Because a lot of, lot of people feel guilty about getting yeah. or How do I prepare my house before the cleaner comes. <laughs> yeah, clean it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what my wife does. Yeah. Um, and what do I do with the animals when a cleaner comes? You, you ask the questions that your target audience is asking and you get them at the right point at which they're making a buying decision. You join the conversation that's going on in their head and then you point them into your products and services because you position yourself as the authority. David, do you mind if I ask some questions about costs for video production? So with the pool guys, um, did they do one day of filming? They did one day of filming. Um, with they, uh, we sat down first, because it's really important to make sure that the, you get the right content, otherwise you might have something that would happen with absolute domestics. So yeah, uh, a da ballpark, to give you an idea, a, a day um, worth of filming with the uh, pre-production, like where we figure out exactly what we're going to record, um, then the editing the transcription, we actually transcribe it, the SEOing it, the loading to the site. So from start to finish, all of it, it's about 12 Aussie grand, like depending on who's watching this. But we kind of vary dramatically depending on, you know, some people do half days, some people do full days. Brian sometimes does two day workshops. And that's done in Melbourne, is it at your studio or wherever? No, wherever. So, I mean, typically Australia based. Um, if you're overseas, usually what we do is we work um, we get you to arrange the filming with someone. You get a freelancer and then they um, express the footage to us. Yeah, okay. Yep. Um, cool, thanks. That gives yeah, me yeah. a good idea. Yep, perfect. Yeah, just going on from Michael's question, how, how long would that $12,000 process go? Because obviously doing the one day of filming is the one day, but the rest is a lot harder. So is it, is it like a six week process or? Yeah, look, um, as you'll see in a little while, I'm a systems guy. So I, even though I'm talking about our company, Melbourne SEO and video, I don't, I'm not actually, um, I don't work in the day-to-day -day operations of that business anymore. I've uh, systemized myself out of it and I've actually got a CEO who runs it now. Um, I'm involved in, in another company. Um, so it's all systemized. So the actual back-end delivery is, is very easy. Really, the, the business owner, they just need to think about the the topics and the ideas afterwards the process normally speaking it's anywhere from sort of two to three months from you know you kind of sit down plan it you pick a day we edit it um, like i said we transcribe it seo load it to youtube optimize it um, we do everything and then um, we save it all as uh, private or unlisted so what you can do is then you uh, you publish so some people they might like Compass Pools, they did it all in one go. They said, well, we've got the content, let's just do it all in one hit. Whereas we've got other clients that, because they're a bit more active on social media, they just started dripping one video per week. So they always felt like they've got this good, fresh content. Yep. With you, um, YouTube, does it always go to YouTube? Or, like, or is there a private way of putting a video on your website without it being on YouTube? Yep. So uh, there's two ways that you would do it. So I always suggest um, uploading to YouTube, but not necessarily embedding the YouTube video on your website. So the reason you always do YouTube is because it's, it's the 100 pound gorilla. It's the biggest player in the video market and you'll get traffic from YouTube. So you definitely upload it there and you need to SEO it and you upload it over there. But um, if you wanted to embed it on your website, sometimes people feel like, oh, YouTube does it. The branding doesn't look as professional and they can click it and they, you know, you get to the end of a video and it, all these related videos pop up. Um, in those situations, if you want to make it a bit more pro on your website, there are private things like uh, Vidla, Vimeo, Wistia. There's a whole lot of different unbranded services. You upload the videos there and they're the ones that you embed in on your website. Yeah. The franchisee stuff for the franchisees, you would keep them private, both on YouTube and on Vimeo. Um, the back end of our website has a whole heap of stuff that's private and you can't find it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, if you've got any more questions for that particular section, um, I'm going to hang around after this and we can have a little bit of a, a look. And yeah, you, you approach um, the two audiences differently. For example, 
franchisees, you, you, you might put all of that behind a, a wall that no one can see. But some of the franchisee questions you should probably also have publicly available as well. So just do a little bit of I spent this session could go on for an hour, yes, but yes. you know the idea, it's an overview here. So the idea with the book is you're gonna get a lot of stuff in there. You really enjoy reading. It's very easy reading and, oh, and certainly been, been done, been prepared very professionally. From a man I think you can see knows his stuff. So uh, Dave, thank you very much indeed. Really appreciate that. Now this.